Hey guys, Kyle with Dirt Bike Channel here again, and today we are going to talk about these little Honda CRF 50F motorcycles. These things are fantastic bikes for kids to learn on. Honda makes a really, really great product, and Honda has been making these for a long, long time. And these little things, in my mind, are the gold standard for learning how to dirt bike for your kids. A lot of you guys on the channel have kids just like I do, and you need a good way for them to kind of get started in the sport. You need something that's not intimidating for them, you need something that's not loud, you need something that doesn't have a clutch to worry about, and you need something that's going to be reliable and be easy to start. And these little Hondas are just the ticket. I'll roll in some footage of my kids, you know, kind of learning on these things. Um, I have three, I have three kids. I've got, uh, right now I've got a five-year-old, I've got a seven-year-old who's almost eight, and then I've got a 10-year-old who's almost 11. And these little bikes actually can work for all three of my kids. So I started out with, with a little bit older, an older model, uh, and then I ended up picking up this second bike here just recently, which is a newer model. Um, the funny thing about these little bikes is they haven't really changed a whole lot in the last uh, 10 or 12 or 15 years. Um, Honda has decided that if the mold isn't broken, then let's not fix it. And on these little bikes, I'm totally fine with that. Here are some of the reasons that I decided to go with Honda over Yamaha. Yamaha has a bike like this uh, that all, is also a pretty good package. The reason why I, I decided to stay with, the, uh, stay with the Honda brand on these little guys is right here. It's the Kickstarter. Honda gives you a Kickstarter and this is how you start these little guys. Yamaha does not give you a Kickstarter on, I think it's called their little PW50 or a TTR50. I have to go check that. In fact, I think they have both. They have a PW and a TTR. Um, but they do not have a Kickstart. The Yamaha only has electric start. With these bikes being, you know, the, the semi-auto clutch that they are, if your bike has a dead battery on that Yamaha, you can no longer start it and it's just a hunk of metal. So I like the fact that these little guys, these little Hondas have the actual kickstart. That's a major, major plus. The bikes aren't, re aren't incredibly heavy, although they are about 115 pounds. And when you're a little kid, that is pretty heavy. Uh, so just be, just keep in mind that these things, if your child is, you know, under say uh, six, it's going to be really hard for them to lift this thing when they, when they tip it over, but it isn't impossible. And my seven year old can pick it up. My five year old now can even start to pick it up when he does tip it over. So that's a plus. I'm going to go ahead and start this for you and show you just how easy this is. Pretty easy. I want to show you guys just how easy it is to start these bikes for kids. So I'm, I've invited my seven year old Connor to come in here and start this thing for us. Okay, buddy. He's going to flip his flip leg over that thing and uh, show you how easy they are to start. Give it a good kick. There you go. See, once a kid learns how to start the bike, how to kick through, uh, they can start this thing pretty simply. Shut her down, bud. Good job, dude. These little bikes have three speeds. You go all the way down, all the way down for neutral, and then you come up, up, up for your gear. So first gear is up, second gear is up, and third gear is up. You don't have to worry about a clutch. As you can see, there's no clutch here on the left hand, so it's nice for kids to be able to do that. It's got the semi-auto clutch. You do have a right brake. One of the things I love about these bikes is the fact that they do have full uh, full reel brakes. You've got the foot brake here under your right foot and you've got, I mean, the rear brake under your right foot and you've got the front brake on your right hand, which is just like it's going to be when they transition to the big bikes. So they are real realistic brakes, uh, not kind of messing anything up there. Um, these bikes also have a throttle stop. If you're concerned about your kid and you don't want them to go too fast, you can just go ahead and use the throttle stop right up here on the throttle to limit their speed and limit how far they can actually twist the throttle. So if that's something that is concerning to you. For me, all we did in the beginning and have done is just kind of limit them to certain gears. So in the beginning, you just pop it into first gear for them and let them ride like that. And then once they build their skills and, and, and want to go a little bit faster, then you can put them in second gear. A great, great feature about this bike is it will start out completely fine with a kid on it in second gear. 
So what I do with my five-year-old a lot is I'll just have him start it in second gear, click it up into first gear, and then click it up into second gear, and he can come, he can be at a complete stop in second gear and then just boom, take off. And that gives him a quite a bit of latitude as far as his speed. He can go slow, he can go a little bit faster, and it's just fun because he doesn't have to worry about shifting. The bike has enough torque to pull through in second gear. Like I mentioned before, they haven't changed these bikes a whole lot in the last 10 years, and they didn't need to. These things, the seat height is about 21 and a half inches right here. So, you know, you can get a four-year-old on these bikes because they only have to put one foot down. That's, that's one big distinction is you can teach your kids, you don't have to put both feet uh, down full, you know, full on to be able to ride these things. As long as you can get one foot down, you can ride. Um, the bikes weigh 110 pounds and that's with full oil and full fuel according to Honda. So keep that in mind. It's not, it's not super light, but they are built like a tank. These things are built to last. The motors are, are bulletproof. As long as you keep oil in the thing and change the oil maybe once a year, uh, these things are pretty much bulletproof. I, I notice that a lot of times kids are just, you know, got these things pinned and going around and they do very, very well. I'm very impressed with uh, these little Honda motors. I love these bikes and I think that if you find one, just, just look for a bike that is, you know, hasn't been beat up too much. The funny thing about these little guys is they don't really fall in the Western United States at the time that I'm filming this, which is in 2016. I've been watching these things for two years and they don't really fall a whole lot in price. You can get them for about 14 or $1,500 new from a dealer. And then by the time you pay all the, you know, all the stuff and all the taxes and everything, you're going to be pushing, you know, 18, you know, anywhere from 1600 to 1800 out the door for a brand new, a brand new dirt bike. But these things will only fall to about $900 on the used market here in the Western United States. If you find one for 800, it's probably because the guy doesn't know, the person doesn't know what it's worth, or maybe they beat the heck out of it. Um, but most of the bikes are going to be, you know, kind of in that 900 to $1,100 range. And it doesn't really matter if it's a 2015 or a 2006, they just sort of hold their value right around that, you know, thousand to $900 mark. So you'll, you'll notice that a lot of these bikes, you'll see a bike that's maybe, you know, a 2006 and it's the same price as a 2010. That's actually pretty normal. The other bike that I have over here, uh, that's just out of the, out of the frame is a 2008. This bike is a 2015 that I picked up used from somebody and uh, I only paid a couple hundred bucks difference in dollars. I think I paid 850 for my first one and that took me a long, long time to find it for 850. And then uh, this one I picked up for, I believe $1,100. And I think that was a really, really good deal for a 2015. The bike still has, still had, uh, at the time, it still had the little nubs on the tire to uh, help you know that this thing had, had hardly been ridden. The previous owner kind of put it in a trailer and gave it some trailer rash and there was a little, little tear in the seat here. Um, but other than that, this bike was in pristine condition. So just be looking for that around that price range between, you know, 800 would be a fantastic deal unless the thing is all beat up. 1100 is kind of like the top that I would spend on a used bike. Um, maybe even 1200 if it is literally, literally brand new. Uh, but just kind of be in mind, be mindful of that. So other than graphics and plastics and, and color, you know, sometimes they swap out some of the different features. Uh, these bikes are relatively uh, unchanged for the last at least 10 years. So I wouldn't have any hesitation with buying an older bike if you find one that's in good shape. These little bikes also come with a key that you can see right up here. So if you want to uh, restrict your kids from being able to ride it, you can just remove the key. Funny thing is, it works on one of my bikes and it, and it doesn't work on my other bike. I think what happened is uh, on my older bike on the 2008 that I have, they lost the key and so they just hot wired the thing <laughs> so that it would run all the time. Uh, so it's nice having the key in case you want to be able to restrict access to your kids if you're gone or if you're, if you're grounding them from the bike or, or something like that. All right, so I have my five-year-old Case out here. He just woke up so his hair isn't done or anything and he's wearing a really nasty old t-shirt here. But I just wanted to show you what, it's, what it looks like to have a five-year-old on the bike. Go ahead and swing a leg over it, buddy. This is Case, by the way. And uh, go put, try to put your feet all the way down and then get the kickstand up. Oh, you're gonna try to start it, huh? Let's see if, let's make sure it's on run. Give it a good kick. Oh, almost. Kick it hard. 
it's a little bit harder for Case to be able to kick this thing. I think he's strong enough, but he just isn't comfortable enough kicking that thing down through. I've seen him do it a couple of times, but, but Connor has a lot easier time doing it. Okay, so let, let's stop trying to start it and then just, just put, your, put your foot over and, and sit on it like you're ready to go and try to get that kickstand up. So get it off the kickstand. Yeah. Oh, there we go. He has a hard time getting it off the kickstand too, but this little kid is a little ripper. And uh, when he's out there on this thing, he is super, super comfortable. Are you really comfortable riding this bike? Do you like riding it? Who's a better rider, you or your big brother? Both of it? You're both good riders? Yeah. They are both good riders and this thing makes them confident. Does it make you pretty confident, buddy? Is it hard to ride? No? What's your favorite part about riding it? Um, when you have to go fast and slow. Do you, do you find that it's easy to use the brakes and, and control your speed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What gear do you like to ride in most of the time? Second. Second gear? Yeah, Connor likes to ride in second gear too. So there you have it. My seven-year-old and my five-year-old love to ride this bike. I'd bring my 11-year-old out here, but she's probably still in bed on a Saturday morning. So we love this Honda CRF50. Um, the, the problem with the KTMs is just that they're too dang expensive. Now I know a lot of you guys say, oh, KTMs are expensive. The big KTMs are just a little bit more money a little bit more money than say like the big Yamahas and the big Hondas. But the little KTMs are a lot more than the Hondas and the Yamahas and the Kawasaki's. Kawasaki's. So I think it's, if it's your first bike, you should be looking at one of the Japanese brands. Um, and then once you move up into your second bike and your third bike, then yeah, maybe we could talk about a KTM. But for right now, these little uh, Honda Sierra 50s, I think they're where it's at. These bikes are driven by chain, as you can see. Actually, you might not be able to see on that. It's a chain drive bike, so it's easy for you to maintain. You just lube the chain. Um, they come with, I don't know, this is about a seven tenths of a gallon gas tank and the kids can ride all day. I mean, they get such phenomenal mileage. Uh, so so you, can, you can get a lot, of, uh, a lot of use out of that. They're quiet, at least if you don't, if you don't pipe them and if you don't change the, you know, the spark arrestor, these things are relatively quiet, so they're not gonna bother a lot of people. Uh, they have, you know, the, the breakaway, you know, foot pegs uh, down here. We already talked about the brakes. Easy to start. Everything's adjustable. You can adjust the brakes. You can adjust, you know, your idle. It's got a reserve on, on, the, on the gas tank, you know, so if, in, case, in case your kids run out of gas, they can throw it on reserve and then hopefully get back home. These bikes are a ton of fun to go out on the trail with. Uh, whether you're just kind of burning around a field or you're doing a real tra trail ride with your kids, they are going to love these things. And it is a real motorcycle. It's not like one of these electric ones. Some of the electric models are pretty cool uh, for your kids to learn on and, and get used to around the house. But this is a full on real motorcycle that adults can ride. So I ride this thing. If I, if I need to go pick my kids up from around the corner, I'll just put the kid on the front and I'll just go and burn around, burn around the neighborhood on this thing and, and pick up my kids. I've even ridden this with my wife. I'll have my wife sit up here and she puts, puts her feet all the way out puts her legs forward and both of us, me and my wife can ride, can ride this bike at the same time. So they do, they do have quite a bit of power. I would say as far as top speeds, it'll go somewhere around uh, 25 to 30 miles an hour when you get it in, in third gear and you get it pinned. Uh, so it's, it's a real motorcycle and it can do some pretty fun things. And I think if you're gonna start your kids out, you ought to start them out right on a, on a real decent bike that's gonna be reliable for years to come. And I just don't know that you can beat the Honda. I know Yamaha has the offering. I know Kawasaki has the offering. And, is, and once you bump up to a little bit you know, bigger bike, then maybe I might change my opinion. And I, and I may say, go with the Kawasaki or go with the Yamaha. But on these little bikes, these 50s, I just don't think you can improve upon the Honda CRF 50F.